Computer Grid. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our C++ uh, Zoom Zoom session. Thank you, Yolanda, for reminding me to record. So I hope the recording has started. Yes, top right hand side started. All right. So uh, anybody wants to say hi, hello, where are you calling me from? And is that Brittany? You must be from out of Durban, I guess. Brittany. I'm in, I'm in Cape Town. Yay! How did I know that? Okay, Cape Town. How's the weather in Cape Town, Brittany? It's funny. Oh, okay. In Germany, it's a bit overcast out here. Brittany, what we're going to do is we're going to, our, my strategy is to talk about assessment three, because that assessment is due pretty soon. All right. And uh, I'm hoping that ma'am gives us, an, gives us uh, an extension to that assignment. Right. But be that as it may, We'll we'll work on it. Let's let's look at it. There's 49 people have. Uh, let me share my screen. Let me share my screen. Share screen. Share screen. And I'm sharing. It. So, please tell me, uh, Brittany, are you able to see my screen? Assessment three. Right. Prior to this, Yolanda had said that she's quite okay with me going through assessment three and what they uh, what they're talking about. So if I look at assessment three. Uh, they, they, it's all about arrays. Uh, where's this assessment three? I know I kept a copy for me. They tackle the question of array quickly, very quickly. Tell me what's an array? Anyone, Brittany, would you be able to define an array for me? Why I'm trying to call up assessment three. Brittany, what's an, what's an array? Okay, Henry. Talk to me. What's an array? Hello, Mr. Governor. Back again. Yes. yes. All right. Have we lost you for a while there, Henry? Yes, the internet's been very bad for the past week or two. We're not entirely sure why. Oh, no. Okay. Right. Talk to me. What's an array? From what I understand, an array is sort of like limits. Mm -hmm. Okay. Limits as in? For example, the program will run between a certain limit, a lower limit and an upper limit. Okay, okay. So, uh, yeah, you, you, you're hinting about uh, this subscript, right? So if I look at the first one, he says, which are the following statements? I did this with you last week and the week before. Uh, they talked about an array, and there's, there's the definition of an array, and it says, declares a one-dimensional array containing two integer values, right? So an array, let's start off with saying that it's a data structure because it stores data. And the word structure means it is structured in a particular way. As uh, Henry quite correctly pointed out, it has an upper limit and a lower limit. And we access that by means of a subscript, all right? Now, if I want to define an array, an array, let me go and find quickly find an array that I did last week. Uh, let's find an array, an array. Ah, there we go, there's my array. Let's quickly go over last week's work. So as a teacher, I need to revise what I did in previous work. Oh, this was about cubes. Where's my arrays? Let's see if I have array pro, pro project function cube array cube array Moses while good time. Um, do I have an array there? Right. Oops, let's just mute mute there. I'm gonna mute you. So with uh let's 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 see, I'm not sure what an, I don't have a program with an array, but what I do have is a strategy for you to tackle an array. So Henrik wants to learn about an array, and I'm going to give you a strategy, and I'm gonna give you one of these guys that I like. His, his name is Bucky. Right. So yesterday I shared a video with you and I said lunchtime movie. And I said, let's watch, watch this thing about uh, uh, arrays. So let's go to, let's go, let's go and see where I'm going to find this video. So I'm looking for Bucky, B-U-C-K-Y, Bucky C++ array. All right. So there we go. So let's, there's these, there's, there, this is what I did la last night. I said, uh, lesson 35. But let's just look at what Bucky has to talk about in the room. Um, Henrik, I'm sharing my screen with you. Are you able to see it? Yes, Savannah? I can see. Thank you. Great. 
So there's, there's Bucky's program. It's on the internet. And the reason I'm taking Bucky's program is that the study guide, I'm expecting that you would have completed the exercise in the study guide on arrays. So here's the program, Bucky. I've put the sound off because I've watched this a couple of times. But this is where Bucky declares an array. And the array name is called Bacon. I think uh, Bucky likes Bacon. Right, so if I look at it, look carefully at it, it says Bucky. Let me just put my video off. And it says Bacon 5. So here's my question to you, uh, Henrik. I'd like to know what's the limit, as you use the word limit, the size of the array? It would be the first four numbers, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, first four? Uh, what's what's the size of this array? It would be a one-dimensional array, I think. Correct, correct, correct. So the type of the array is a one-dimensional. What's the size? Size. Isn't it five? Yolanda is correct. Yes, back, uh, Henrik, it's five. There's, it gives you a hint out there. Uh, it's five, right? That's the size of the array. It's five. Henrik, do you see that? Within the square bracket, yeah, see it tell me it's five. Yeah, see right? yes. Good. Now, at position, by the way, we start counting at position zero, right? Zero, one, two, three, four. So at position zero, it's 12. Position one, it's 43. Position two is 54. Position three, it's three. Position four is 897. And every single element, Henrik, is an integer. Right? This is what Bucky is going to tell you about. Yeah. So, after this lesson, I'd like you to watch Bucky's video. Okay? It's only yeah, six right. minutes. Okay. It's six minutes and 39 seconds. Right? So, apart from me as your e-tutor, you also have the internet to help you. Right? And when I say right. internet, I mean Bucky's videos. Right? Oops, did I do that? Right. Okay, so, let's now, now my next question, Yolanda. Uh, regarding this uh, program. Yolanda, I'd like to know, how do I access the array? Before Bucky gets into it. If I want to access all the elements of the array, starting from, like Kendrick had pointed out, it has limits, starting from position zero to position four, which are five elements, how would I access it? There's a, there's a, I, I gave you all a hint last week, and if you watched my video, I told you about a particular uh, programming structure that I would use. Hey, I must say, at this moment, I still need more practice on those. Okay. So... No, 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 that's what you. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to help you. Uh, Henrik, do you remember what what uh, programming structure we used? to access all the elements of the array? I think so. Didn't mm -hmm. we have a number in square brackets that encompass Correct. the whole array, the number Correct. of integers? Correct. And and how did we go through each uh, element of the array? It's in your assessment three as well. I think what we did there was we uh, we just adjusted the number. We okay. counted up the number and implemented it. Yes, yes, yes. You use a nice word. You use a nice word. Counted. How did we count? How do we count? I think we used um an, a for statement there. Correct. Oh, let me let me let me put my video on and and, and uh, that's what I wanted from you. Let me put my video on, then you can see me clapping for you. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. And clap, 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 clap. Well done, well done, Henry. Now that's what I wanted the answer to come from you, right? Okay. We used a for loop. So a for loop, you got to revise this as well now, right? For the rest of you. When you're working with an array, you got to use a for loop if you want to access all the elements from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, because that's how a for loop is structured, right? So well done, Henrik. Thank you for that, right? Thank you. Now, let me continue. So there's Bucky going out there. And Bucky is actually in this video when you watch it. I'm going to post this in the chat. Let's yeah, let's copy this link and post it. In. This is your homework. Which other lecturer uh, or tutor asks you to 
to watch videos. Uh, Henrik, as homework. Um, none that I'm aware of. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm actually telling you to watch this video, right? So there it is. So I'm going to say in the chat, I'm going to say, watch this video. Watch this video on accessing array elements, right? So Bucky is talking about accessing a single array element, and we access it by means of its subscript. So I'm going to pause the video out here. So in that, oops, did we pause it, right? In that instance, we access it by, uh, by just its uh, subscript. So bacon subscript 5, or bacon subscript 2, or bacon subscript 0, or bacon subscript 1. But if I had to go through each and every element, then I will definitely need to use a loop. Now, for today's lesson, what I'm going to do is I'm going to incorporate what I spoke to you a couple of weeks ago about having a function. Mm, Henrik, do you remember that lesson, Henrik? I think I do, yes. Yeah, what, what, tell me, what's a function? Talk to me, colloquial terms, what's a function? A function is essentially a set operation that the program has to perform. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and 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 it's give me give me more about this. If you look at the program in front of you, I'm sharing my screen. I'm I'm calling in a function read in. What what are those little the word length and width inside there? What are what are they? Oh, uh, those are your variables. Correct, correct. But they have a specific name with respect to the word function. I'm more used to thinking about things in a mathematical form, so okay, the variables okay. only with the comes up at the moment. Okay, okay, it starts with P, and don't say printer. <laughs> P, um, P no, it's escaping. Okay, anybody else? Like parameters, to yes, of course. Yeah. Parameters. Parameter. Yes, 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 parameters, right? So those are parameters. And there, it has an ampersand in front of it. Do you re recall what that what that means, uh, Henry? Or I think Yolanda? that means that. Yeah, yeah go ahead, with you, Henry. I think that means it's uh, an overreaching function, actually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And also, we are referring to that. We are referencing that parameter, right? We're referencing that parameter. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We are referencing okay. that parameter. So in today's lesson on arrays, I'm going to combine the work of functions and I'm going to combine the work of parameters and a little bit about an array, right? And a little bit about an array. So with programming, if you don't understand what a function does, if you don't understand parameters, and if you don't understand array, to put all that together and make a biryani or a stew out of it is going to be a bit difficult for you. So I would suggest if you're finding this lesson on uh, passing of arrays as parameters difficult, then you need to go over what a function is, you go over the definition of an array, and you go over the definition of a parameter. Cool? Yolanda? Cool. Hi. Cool, cool. You're co cool with that. All right? And, and I'm going to take this lesson from Bucky, passing arrays to functions as a parameter. So here's, here's the lesson. And this is how you need to work. I've actually got a TV screen connected to my laptop, and I can extend it such that I can see program on one side, and I can see uh, the video on the other side, right? So I could, or I could, in a way, I could, uh, let's, split my screen in half, right? So here's the program. I've got the program on the left-hand side. And I don't want you to copy and paste. That's why I'm deliberately taking Bucky as an example, right? I want you to write out the program, type it out as he is doing it, right? And this is another strategy to learn programming, right? This is another strategy that you're gonna use to learn programming, right? So B Bucky talks a little bit about prototyping. It's it's slightly off the syllabus, as in UNISA, how they do it. But I will explain to you a little bit about it, and we will adapt it for our needs. Now, this is where the difference comes in, where you you watch a video on YouTube, uh, not from me, that is, and they may not necessarily use 
the syllabus from uh, UNISA. Right, so I'm trying to put both on there. And there we go, All right? So let's go to file, new, file, new project, and console application, C++. Let's call this uh, passing parameters. Passing parameters array, right? So let's look at what Bucky is talking about. Now I'm gonna take it slightly different from the way Bucky did it. And right, so here's his program. So he would have typed out the program. You would have watched this program. And I'm gonna show you how you're gonna study it, right? You can either take a screenshot of it or you can print it and all right, in my case, I'm going to print it right. So I'm going to I'm going to pause it right there. I'm going to do a screenshot, a snip, or I could have run the video on the side there, right? So there's my there's my program. Here's my program. You would obviously keep it in on side by side, or if you have another laptop, oh, all the better, right? So you can see it out there. There's my code blocks on the right hand side. Guys are still with me. I'm not hearing anybody saying hello. How are you? Hello, how are you? Oh, you're with me. Oh, goody, goody, goody. Yeah, right, right, right. Please now and then say hello, how are you, and all of that, so that I know that you're around, you know. Answer me a question or two. Ask me a question or two. So there's my program on the right hand side. I don't need that. I'm going to. Alrighty, so let's go. So Bucky has the word includes IO stream. Below that, he's got using namespace. Now he's calling void print array, right? So I'm going to do that there, right? So I'm going to call, call this up void print array open brackets. And he's got the word int. Now, this is not the way Unisa does it. The array square brackets. And he's got int size of array. So, Hendrik, here's my question to you. And I know that you're still paying attention to me. This is the function heading. It's a void function. What do we call these specific variables, the array and size of array? What are they called? They would be the parameters of your variable. <laughs> of, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Well done, Hendrik. Hendrik, they don't have an ampersand sign in front of them. What kind I of parameters are they? The they should be have all... a... Sorry, they should just be all... yeah. they won't be referenced anywhere else, I don't think. Yeah, they are just they, in fact the specific name is given as a value parameter, right? Now right. Uh, I'm just gonna just bear with me for a few minutes because this is how Bucky does it, right? I want to copy exactly what Bucky does, and I'm going to show you how Unisa uh, operates, right? So there's Bucky, B-U-C-K-Y, uh, uh, and the name of the array is called Bucky, and inside there, he's got 20, and he's got 54, and he's got 675, right? So he stores that in. By the way, can you see the curly bracket that they have there, right? A I couple of days ago, I, I, oh, I think Jessica is his girlfriend. I'm not sure, right? He likes the word Jessica. And he's calling me Jessica. This is where we initialize the variables, right? When we initialize the array and we start it, and he's got 54, comma, 24, comma, 7, comma, 8, comma, 9, comma, 99, right? So, Hendrik, let's count with me. Six elements, one, two, three, four, five, six. But in terms yes, of the way we access it, this is position zero, one, two, three, four, five. And it, yep. indeed, it is six elements. So this is where we've, initial, we've uh, declared the array and we've initialized it, right? I think last week, you remember, and in the assignment question as well, assignment three, they've got it equal to zero. That's called initializing, right? Initializing it to zero. I remember it, yes. Right, good, good. Oh, it's all coming back to you. So this is happening in the main program. And then 
he calls the function by its name. The function is called print array, and he passes across two variables. He passes across Jessica, and he passes across six. So Jessica is the name of the array, and he passes that across, and now we basically in the program, right? We in the main man. All right, so we in the main man, like, I mean, well, he doesn't use return zero, so I'm going to take that out. Now, the difference with this with Bucky is he now writes his function void after the main program. But you must remember, he also calls it up in line number four. He prototypes it. That's the word he uses, right? So it's print array. Now, Unisa writes line number 12 in the space of line number four. I'm going to show it to you how it works, right? So uh, that's, well, that's, they thus decided that in terms of uh, convention or the way they will like it. So some people will like to write variables in all capital letters. Some will say only the first one is a capital letter and so forth, right? And int size of, that's another convention of writing, right? So we've done that, and let's open up the function. There's this, there's, this is what I told you about, uh, Henrik, the for loop. Remember, I said, if you want to yes, access indeed. all the elements of the array, we access it with the for loop. And now, Henrik, notice I'm starting at position zero. So my loop must start with position zero. X is equal to zero. Oh. X must run all the way to one less than uh, six. So it's five, right? So it's size. So of, oh, it's helping me along size of array. And the for loop says that I incremented by one, x plus plus, right? Right. Plus plus. Open brackets. And right now it simply says, see out. I'm calling it by the array name, the array. And I am A-R-R-A-Y. And I'm passing it in my subscript, subscript x. And this is just to make it look pretty with the end line. And I'm closing that loop, right? So that should do it for me. Let's just maximize the screen. So let's see what I've, I've, I've retyped whatever uh, Bucky has done. Now, the reason I have to uh, talk about Bucky is because you don't have me six days a week, like my full-time students, right? All you have is me once a week, and that too, it's only for an hour or so, sometimes less than that. Other times we talk, talk for more than that, right? I don't know if Moses is around. Moses will tell you how long we spoke for, right? So I'm just trying to make it all look on one screen. So there we go. And now I'm closing. So this is what happened with Bucky. So you would have typed out, uh, firstly, Henrik, you would watch the, uh, the Bucky's video for six minutes and 39 seconds. You'll either print it on a page or you'll use another laptop or another monitor and type it out, right? And then you'll run the program. Let's run Bucky's program. And obviously you'll have his, uh, you know, what he's talking about and all of that. And then we can see the program runs. So let's let's run the program. Yay, there we go, it runs. So it runs, right? It runs, where is it, right? 54, 24, 7, 8, 9, 99. So I'm just talking about what Bucky would say. Meantime, you would have already watched this because you had watched the movie beforehand or you're going to do it on your own. So let's see what is happening with this program. Let's do a once upon a time story. Once upon a time, there was a program written by Bucky and he is talking about passing of parameters, arrays as parameters, right? In line number four, ooh, uh, Henrik, this is slightly different to the way Unisa has set it out. We have what is known as prototyping. We are calling void print array so that we can use it in the main program. And in the main program, print array is the name of the function. But Unisa doesn't do it like that. They yes. will actually have the function written in line number four. So I'm going to do it like the way Unisa has it, right? Because we don't know who's going to be marking your exam paper or your assignment or wherever. And we want to do the user convention that Unisa uses. So Unisa would have had this control X, they would have that up there, right? And they will not have line number five. And guess what? It's going to have the same effect. Henrik? Yes, Mr. Governor, I think that's quite effect. fine. It's the same effect, yeah. right? 
So in fact, I'm saving one extra line, Bucky. Right, Bucky? Okay, so let's just, uh, let me just prove that to you. I've compiled, build and run. Yay, check it out. Hendrik, do I have the same effect? Yeah, same, thing? Quite same thing, same thing, same thing. So this is the way UNISA does it. Now that's why my, that's how I got a job basically to explain to you the way UNISA will write. If you want to use this the way Bucky does it. Ah, Brittany, go ahead with the question. Yes. Does it matter the, the conventions that we use if it still comes out to the same result? I, I love that question. Brittany, there's 419 of you doing it, right? There may be about four or five different markers that are using it. If that marker does not know that you could prototype the function and ahead of what you're using, and he has a marking memo that says, in line number three, four, five, six, seven, he expects to see a function and you go and write the function line three, four, five, like the way Bucky does it in line 15, 16, 17, he may think that you have it incorrect, all right? Which is perfectly correct, right? So I would like you to use the convention that UNISA uses. If they have the functions written above the main program, do it like that. What do you think, Brittany? I, I'm just concerned about my assignment too now. Oh, why? Because I didn't necessarily use the conventions that they gave us in like the study guide and that stuff, but it still came out to the same thing. Oh, that, that, listen, Brittany, if you have a screenshot of your output and they can see that, that's okay. Like I said, it's, it's a luck of your draw uh, in terms of the markers. If the marker can see that you have the output and he knows a little bit more about the memo, then he could, would mark it. I know that's what I would do at DUT. And we always ensure, but listen, nine out of 10 times you'll be marked correctly, right? I'm not, I'm not saying it won't work out. Um, all I'm saying is try and keep to the convention that uh, UNISA is using. If they are using in this case that the function is declared above the main program, then that's how you must have it. Okay. Okay. Brittany, right? Yeah. Okay, right. So let's run this program now. And, and, and I just wanna talk you through it because in this program, we're combining what we learned about an array, we're combining initializing an array, we're combining passing up parameters as an array. So I'm gonna sh I'm gonna share this little video of uh, Bucky in the chat. So there's the, the control C and let's open up uh, Zoom. So there's another movie for you to watch. This is seven minutes the movie is. Brittany, is that okay? You're gonna watch two movies today, no Netflix or anything of that sort. Yeah. <laughs> right? And the Netflix movies, especially the series, oh, it ends on a high note and you've got a on a cliffhanger and you've got to watch the next one. So you can end up watching about four or five hours at a time. Have you ever noticed that with Netflix, uh, Brittany or Henrik, if you've got a Netflix? Uh, no, Mr. Governor, we oh, don't okay. really deal with it. It's around here. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But but if you're watching a movie, a movie is at least one and a half hours, right, uh, Hendrik? Brittany? It depends, really. Yeah, okay, it's about that amount, right? Time. So um, all I'm asking is for 12 minutes. Seven, seven minutes, 58 seconds on this one, and, and about six minutes on that one. Let's round it up. Seven and six is 12 minutes, right? If you watch what Bucky says, and if you watch my video, I'm gonna try and finish off in the next 10 minutes or so. Um, I guarantee you, you would be able to comprehend and understand the concepts of passing an entire array as a parameter. So let's go. So there's Bucky's example. Let's do my story sum again. Once upon a time, there was a main program. And in the main program, there were two arrays and one was called Bucky, declared in line number 10. And Bucky had integers stored in them. The size of Bucky was three. There were three elements in there. Element position zero was 20. Element position one was 54. Element position two was 675. In line number 11, there was another array declared. And that name was called Jessica. Jessica stored six integers. In position zero was 54. In uh, Jessica... Oh, position one was 24. In Jessica, position two was uh, seven and so forth. In line number 12, we had what is known as a function call. We are calling the function called print array. 
and we are passing across two variables. One is a is an array called Jessica, and the other parameter is the number six. Number six is actually the size of the array. Henrik, we now go yes, to line number three. In line number three, Henrik, yes. there's two variables and they have some very specific names. The array and size of array. What are those What's variables called? What are those variables called? The parameters for the void function. Excellent. And parameters have an even more specific name, Henrik. What are they called? In these cases, these would be value parameters. Perfect. Yes, 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 yes. You learned something. Now, Henrik, if I had to put this in front of it, this ampersand in front of it, what kind of parameter it becomes? Then they would be reference parameters, I think. Correct, correct. By the way, if I run this program, I can take a bet with you. It's going to give me the same answer, right? Let's run the program. I ran the program before. It gave me 54, 24, 7, 8, 9, 99. Let's run the program again. Let's run the program again. Uh... It doesn't like that. It doesn't like that. Okay, let's take that one out. Let's see that if it likes it. Oh, it doesn't like that. It doesn't like that. It doesn't like it. Okay, okay. okay. I, I'll know why. But for now, let's just confuse ourselves. And there we go. It gave me the say the, the answer is still working. It's working out, right? Uh, somewhere in your text, you're going to read about when you pass arrays, it pass is passed back to the main program as a reference parameter. But for now, just let's go with the flow. Now... I can change this. I can now let's let's do a C out statement out here. E N D L. I just want a line. And here I'm calling up print array. And this time I'm passing across Bucky. B U C K Y. Notice I do not have the square brackets there. Henrik, did you see that? I see this, yes. Yeah, because I'm actually passing across a variable. And the variable is Bucky, mm -hmm. and the Bucky is a special type of variable. It's an array. And guess what? At one go, I'm passing across three elements. Ain't that cool? Okay. Ain't that cool? It is actually, yes. Yeah, yeah. Because prior to this, we are, if we needed to pass a variable, we need to pass it one at a time. If you watch Jenny's video, the one I posted on the announcement, she talks about this as well, right? And we've got to pass across three. Three tells me the size of the array. Let me run this program now. Right, compile it and build and run. Oh, by the way, at, in Unisa, they like to have return zero, right? So I'm just going to put return right. zero right at the, at the end over there because that's what Unisa does, right? And let's see if it compiles. Everything is fine. And like I said, uh, Brittany, you saw it worked without return zero, but if Unisa likes to put a return zero at the end of it all, why not go with the flow? All right. So let's run the program. Look at that. Brittany, check it out. Henrik, check it out. Right. The, the rest of you, check it out. We have the first array and the second one being passed up. Right. I see. Yes. Yeah. Now, <laughs> if I wanted to, if I change the order of this thing around, and we we'll just do some revision with the functions. If I call up print array and I pass Bucky first, and then I call up Jessica, it's going to give me 20, 54, 65, 67 first, and then it's going to print it. Right? So a quick revision of a function. The order is also important. Right? So check that out. 20, 54, 67. I see. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that works well. Yes. Yes. Right. So that's also, that's also what happens with uh, a calling of a function. Right? and passing off an array as a parameter. So I said, I'm not gonna keep you too long because for one, I'm also a little bit hungry. I had a lecture this morning and went over the time. On a Saturday, I have an eight o'clock lecture and um, I, I still have my breakfast in the oven. I hope my wife can take my breakfast away. It's still in the microwave, so I've got to eat that. And uh, I'm feeling a bit nibbly dibbly. So Henrik, we're gonna have a short lecture for today, right? But all I'm talking okay. about is one, is that, oh, is that okay, justifiable, thank you. But also, I'm leaving at a point where I'm talking about array being passed as parameters. In this lecture or in this uh, tutorial or Zoom lesson, I revised the definition of an array. I, uh, 
uh, I revised the um, concept of the loop where we talk about uh, accessing all the elements of the array. We even accessed an array without um, a, uh, the loop. That was a previous lesson of Bucky's. And now I showed you how to write a function, which is a revision from what we did a couple of weeks ago. And by the way, that's why I can finish early as well. We did this thing uh, without a function the other day, last week, and now we're doing it with a function. And also I've done okay. is I've shown you how to pass across the entire array in one go, right? If this was a, a array of 100 elements, all I got to do is pass it with its name, and I use it inside the function, and I go and display it out there, right? Before we leave, all I'm going to do is I'm going to increment each element by one, right? So this is how easy it is. I'm going to say Control C, Control V, and I'm not going to call print array. I'm going to say increase by one, right? So that's the name of the array. And here it is. I'm going to call up the array increase by one. I don't need all of that. Uh, let's have Bucky. We'll have we'll just have Bucky. And now as a revision, I'm going to pass across the whole array Bucky. And I'm going to pass across the size of the array. And I'm going to now print the array. And I'm going to show you how after calling increase by one, again, it will increase every single element by one. Well, I hope it works, right? Let's put an uh, end line there. C out, so we see the difference. Uh, e in DL, uh, E in DL, C out each element of Bucky's array is increased by one. And in order to do that, this is all I need to do. I'm going to say increment each one by one and take out that. The array subscript x is equal to whatever it was previously, and I'm incrementing it by one. Let's go and compile this. Let's see if this works. Then I can have some my breakfast. Ooh, I didn't do that. You forgot the e N D L. Yes, I forgot that. Yeah. Let's compile that. And I forgot something else. I guess one of your. Ooh, uh, yeah, my yeah, 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 yeah. See, I, I'm I'm hungry now. I think I think that's right. All right, let's run this program. There we go. So it's twenty fifty four sixty seven. Can you see it increased by one, 21, 55, 676. And that's where I'm gonna leave it. I will do a screenshot of this and I'll post this in our uh, WhatsApp group and I'll post it on uh, Control A, Control C, post it in, let's see if it's there, INP, INP. Oh, is this is this me? Yes, yes, it is me. Control. It's v. me that just posted the videos. The excellent, link. excellent. Thank you. Can you just write a little note as well to tell him that that's what we did in our Zoom lesson, right? No problem, sir. Yay! Thank you. And and I I don't get the name. Who's the who who did that? It's Moses. Hey, Moses. Thank you, Moses. You're a star, right, Moses? And just tell them we were talking about passing arrays as parameters, right? And we spoke about Bucky. I have to give Bucky credit as well. Cool. Any questions regarding passing off an array as a parameter? That's what today's lesson was all about. I, I will revise this next week and the week thereafter because this is an important concept where we pass an array as a parameter. Any questions? I'm quite fine, Mr. Governor. I think you explained it very nicely. Thank you. Yeah. It's okay. I thought it was okay. Yeah. Okay. All right.
sorry, sorry. Yes, 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 Hamlet, go ahead. Uh, I see. I think you explained it very nicely. I'm quite fine personally. Oh, thank you, Henrik. Are you not just flattering me, Henrik? Uh, but no, I told you, no, I like no, flatter. Like, everybody loves a compliment. Okay, thank you, thank you. Right? So, uh, yeah, thank you, Henrik. So, quickly, uh, just note that when you pass it an array as a parameter, you pass it without its square bracket. And you also it's also nice to pass across the size of the array. I could have left it out and made it a global variable, but that's for another day. Right? We're talking about global variables, local variables, and... Um, yeah, let's not. I don't want to confuse you. Leave it at that. Okay. Anybody with a question? Moses, question? Question, Moses? Anyone? I don't have a question today, sir. I'm oh, happy with okay. it. Okay, yeah. okay. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll do some screenshots of this and I'll share it with you guys. All right. Uh, let's let's uh, stop the share. Can we do a quick uh, class photograph? I'll post my other class photograph I did this morning. Brittany, you want to put your camera on? Precious, Moses, Henrik, can we take a quick photograph? Come on, we have to we make, we make them jealous that they didn't join us. Uh, what do you think? That's what I take a photograph. Hey, Moses, check it out, Moses. Yay, Moses is in the house. Let's close that. Thank you, Moses. Okay. Yay, Yolanda! Okay, Brittany, we're waiting for you. I, th I don't have a webcam. Okay, okay, okay. Precious, we're waiting for you. No. Okay, photograph taking. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Precious is on. Okay, let's do another photograph. Let's do another photograph. And, and sign. Yay! Great. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye, sir. Thank you. Bye, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye, Bye, Moses. Bye. Let's stop the recording. Oops, where's the recording button? Stop the recording.